Hey, vegan cyclists, marginal gains, number two, weight. How much does weight affect your performance? What does it do to your cadence, your heart rate? The distance traveled when power is kept the same. Speed, max speed. I mean, I honestly think that it's pretty easy to say the more weight you have and the steeper the gradient, you kind of get this graph of it's going to be, it's going to affect you more on a steeper gradient and the more weight that you have versus the flatter it is, the less effective that weight is going to, or, or the less disadvantage you're going to have. But I wanted to know by how much. And my last one, marginal gains number one, how much will a ceramic uh, bottom bracket save you? I got torn apart. Literally in the comments, people were just like, delete your YouTube channel. You're not a scientist. <laughs> and the thing is, man, science is hard. It's, it's really difficult. And the marginal gain series is more about just like, dude, if I go and hit the road with a new set of wheels or a new helmet or uh, something that saved me three pounds, I wanna know like right then and there what that difference is. And I know that if you pull all the variables out and you isolate everything, like, yes, you're going to say by having one extra little whisker on your face is going to have some sort of impact, but just chill, take it easy. Okay. This one's at least definitely the easiest one to, uh, to crunch the numbers for, but I did get the help of don't feed the animals. Uh, his name's Alex smart and he has a lot more uh, history and research and setting up research setting up these trials and he was one in the comments that just like his head exploded so then he was he's like hey man let's let's work together let me kind of tell you how to structure these you need way more data points you need to do these back to back you need to flip the rotation is anyway so all the numbers that i'm going to give you are definitely thanks to alex and at the channel don't feed the animals so if you want to give some love to him that would be awesome if you check them out because all the numbers that were been crunched and everything that he's given me and everything he, he helped me with this this case study, if you will. All right, so let's break down exactly how this all was set up. Three different weights. One at 163 pounds, one where I added two water bottles, which added just over three pounds, so a total of 166. And then I had a weight vest, which added 12 pounds. So a huge jump, right? At plus three pounds and then plus 12 pounds. And we're gonna do that over a steady climb, a steep climb, but short. Uh, flat with actually negative elevation, and then a full-on out sprint. So the idea was four different efforts, three different weights. Grabbed my bike, got out the door, and uh, started to bust these these efforts out. Once I got out on the road, I realized that if I drink from my water bottles, I'm going to mess up this, the science of this. So I, I didn't drink anything, right? I didn't drink anything. Now I kept my power as, as even as I possibly could. And so it, that's, what's so awesome about the power meter is that I can really kind of say like, it doesn't matter if I'm not feeling great or if I'm fatigued or, or if I'm dehydrated, like my power, if I put out the same power, I should get the same results. So I did three runs. Weighted three runs, mid weight three runs, no weight. All right, and so again, the, um, the distance is a little bit hard to, to look at, but basically it's 0.7 miles was no weight, 0.6, you know, 6.7, just like a little bit with uh, mid weight, and then 0.6 with weight. Now, okay, 
what I think probably what's the most um, easy and definitive to look at is average speed. So my average speed, my average speed for no weight is was eight and a half miles an hour with water like mid weight 8.3 and with the 12 pounds 8.1 so you can see that it was like trending down this is i think we all would expect that one interesting thing is that my max power kind of like i was telling you is it was hard to so i was surging way more with no weight 364 363 351 as my max power numbers and these are averages over those three efforts my heart rate trended up as the weight got increased so no weight 159 was my average heart rate across those three efforts uh with the mid weight 160 and then 161 for all the weight so one beat one beat per minute difference average you're right so the less weight the less my heart rate was uh was having to work at a set given power which was 300 watts try to hit 300 watts for five minutes you know all those times my rpms uh no weight 80 average a little bit of weight 79 a lot of weight 76 so you can see the trend again going down the more weight the lower my average cadence but that makes sense because I'm keeping my power consistent. And so I can't really, you know what I mean? I'm locked out of my biggest gear, my, my climbing gear. And with more weight, I'm just, I can't push more power. So my max RPM was kind of interesting. It was 102 for no weight, 101 for mid weight and 93, which is a substantial difference for uh, the lot of weight. What I find interesting though on this one is that I've added three pounds on the second effort. Then I added 12 pounds on the third effort. And you don't really see a, a huge uptick. It's very linear, which I, I find is, is, is super strange. I would, I would think that if, you know, three pounds added X, that if I doubled that to then add six pounds, you know, but it does, it's, it's, uh, it's not like that. Like is it, okay, so three pounds is a difference in one uh, beat per minute. 12 pounds is a difference in one beat per minute. The difference between uh, three pounds is 0.2 miles per hour average. With 12 pounds, it's 0.2 miles per hour average. So, right, so it's, it's, it's kind of strange how that works. Like, as in the three pounds seems to have the same effect as 12 pounds, which doesn't, doesn't seem right but that's what the data shows. Now, obviously I think that if you just kept going, like you kept doing that climb, I did an hour climb, maybe those numbers would get further apart as my cadence is, is much lower. And so at a certain point, I might just build up way too much fatigue and then have a full on drop off. Well, let's talk about the second effort, which is a much steeper, is about a one minute and 30 second effort. And I try to keep my average watts around 430, 440 watts. I wasn't going for time. I was just going distance from point A to point B, see how, uh, what the time difference would be, right? So with uh, no weight, I did, I did that climb in one minute, 29 seconds. With three pounds, I did it in one minute, 32 seconds. And then with uh, the 12 pounds, one minute and 34 seconds. So again, that's really weird linear chart on a non-linear amount of weight, right? So added two seconds on average, added two seconds to every effort as I upped the weight. My average speed for these efforts went 9.2, 9.1, 8.9. So that is the, that so far is the only one that actually had a, a little bit more exponential uh, kick up. You know what I mean? Uh, 0.10 difference between no weight and three pounds and a 0.2 mile per hour difference uh, between three pounds and 12 pounds. My average power was really spot on for these. It's 433, 431, 437. So that's awesome. My heart rate um, average really kind of, I mean, I was, I was going pretty hard every time. So it wasn't like uh, I was trying to gauge my effort at all. And across the board, the other stuff is kind of just all very similar. But so on a steep one and a half minute climb, no weight, three pounds and 12 pounds, you know, it slowed the time and it slowed my average speed, which obviously, but it didn't really do much with my cadence or my heart rate um, or my max power or any sort of thing like that. I mean, it was just um, at, at pretty much the same given power wattage 
uh, I just went slower, which of course, right? All right, so let's talk about the flat one. Obviously, and I'm gonna say obviously a million times, uh, you go uphill with more weight, you go slower. That's what this is showing. It, it's honestly not showing as, as much of a difference as I would have expected to see or want to see. But so on a flat section where um, I just, it was a little rolling, but it would have negative elevation in it. I basically did um, a three minute effort. Now I held 300 watts. That was what I was, my goal was, hold 300 watts. And the time that it took me to cover that distance was basically the same every time. 301, 301, 301, 304. And that's 304, I just kind of lost track. Honestly, I was just daydreaming. I had some headphones in and uh, this is time-wise, three minutes, one second, three minutes, one second, three minutes, one second, three minutes, four seconds because I just wasn't paying attention to my power and I did 285. So I, I kind of have to throw that one out. And I only did this with two different weights, no weight. So 163 and then 178. So, I mean, my average speed and everything is just all very, it's hard to gain any like science out of this one because there's a lot of variables as I'm going faster and the, the cadence wasn't really an issue. There really wasn't much of a disadvantage to having 12 pounds, but I would have said, I, I would have thought I would have had an advantage with the extra weight because it was actually a negative elevation, but it just looked like really that there's very little difference to any sort of weight when you're doing flat or or slightly downhill and i think that that is again very easy to to understand but here's here's what i was interested in is that if when i turned around and i came back and i sprinted flat sprint going all out and i started at about 20 miles an hour would that weight really prevent me from reaching a certain max speed so the fourth effort where I just did, I did two of them, uh, two efforts at no weight, two efforts with 12 plus three pounds. With no weight, my max speed was 30.6 and 28.6. With the weight, my max was 28.6 and 28. So with the weight, I was never able to hit, I, I couldn't really hit, um, my goal was to hit over 30 miles an hour, right? And it just, it felt really, difficult to get the bike going with that extra weight and i know with the weight vest it's actually not super aero so you could take into account that the the vest possibly was making me a little less aero but just in the feel of it i couldn't snap i couldn't get going there was much more mass to get moving and so i kind of wasted a lot of energy building that up all right so let's talk about two things one the results of this and then two d can you really lose say 15 pounds and continue to hold the same amount of power. For a lot of people, that's not the case. For me, that's not the case. Right now, at I weigh about 158 pounds. If I lost 15 pounds, my power would fall off a cliff. There's just no way I would, I would be, I would die. There's just no way I could do that, okay? And so uh, it's not always like you lose weight keep power that would be awesome and that's improving our power to weight ratio but a lot of times when you start to lose weight you do uh, lose a little bit of power depending on where you are in your weight journey now if you're 350 pounds you could essentially lose 50 pounds and and never lose a bit of your power just because you have so much uh fat right and that's not really muscle but as you start to get really 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 lean you know, when you lose weight, you do lose a little bit of muscle, you lose a little bit of that fitness. And so you gotta find that like that perfect point. So the difference of 12 pounds, uh, you know, I'm not sure if those numbers are totally, you can really gain a lot from that. Cause if for most people, I think if you lost 12 pounds, you would not be able to sustain the same level of power, but you probably wouldn't, your weight would go down more than your power would. But what's really interesting is the three pounds. Three pounds is like a good poop right? You know what I mean? So if you're talking about marginal gains with products, not just your physical weight, but you could shed three pounds off your whole setup for the most part. You know, if you're going into a, a, a little segment, a KOM, and you were going to turn back around dumping your bottles at the base of the KOM, like that is going to play a pretty good uh, difference. Like three pounds is marginal. And what I saw here in these results is the difference between losing three pounds and losing 12 pounds 
wasn't really that big of a difference. Not as much of a difference as I was expecting, or, or again, hoping for. But with three less pounds, you're going to climb faster, climb further at the same power, with a better cadence, lower heart rate. On steeper climbs, just losing three pounds is going to allow you to uh, sustain a still a very high level of power, but get done with that level of power sooner. And even if it's just a couple seconds, like in these tests, it was only two seconds between no weight and an additional three pounds. But say you were doing a crit and it had a little, little kicker in it and you go over that 10 times. Well, think about, you know, the 20 seconds. Like if you were always two seconds off and had to close that, that's a, that is a huge difference. Like, so the marginal two seconds over a lot of surges would end up being pretty substantial. And I gotta say thank you to Don't Feed the Animals, uh, Alex, for putting this, these crunching these numbers together and kind of helping me look at some of the stuff where we actually flipped the, the order. I went no weight, three pounds, 12 pounds, and then 12 pounds, three pounds, no weight, right? To try to just keep it as scientific as possible. But again, science is so hard. Um, but look, this is not the purpose of this series is to publish some paper that's gonna change our world. It is just my um, experience and probably a very similar experience for you. And like, let's just, let's just take it for what it is, right? Uh, there is a little bit of differences. It's neat. You lose three pounds, you're gonna gain some speed on some climbs um, and possibly some, some speed in a max sprint. Lose 12 pounds and you'll get more, but not necessarily from what this shows, not necessarily an exponential growth of that. Again, I've linked the PDF down in the bottom so you can check out all these numbers and uh, you can tell me what a horrible scientist I am and, and that I don't deserve to be on YouTube. But I hope that you enjoy the second installment of Marginal Gains, which is weight. And I think this is gonna be the easiest one. Uh, the next ones I've got going on is aero helmets and aero wheels. So we'll take a look at those eventually. As always guys, vegan cyclists. Yeah.